Good to see everybody today. I hope you enjoyed that video for World Autism Awareness Month. So yes, it is such a thing. And I'm so thankful that as a church, that we could take this time to be more knowledgeable and to be able to celebrate this together because I have some statistics for you. Uh, in 2019 and to, into 2020, studies have found that the percent of students with disabilities with autism almost doubled from 5.8% to 11% and it's still rising. In 2021, the CDC reported that approximately one in 44 children in the US is diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. And did you know that New Jersey now has the second highest rate of autism in the nation? That's one in 35 children. In the past decade, the number of students with disabilities overall has grown from just under 6.5 million in 20, 2009 to 10 to almost 7.3 million in 2019 to 20. Not only that, but 61 million adults in the US live with a disability. 26%, that's one in four of adults in the US have some type of disability. That includes depression, that includes anxiety, which has been on the rise with the pandemic. And did you know that 17.2% of students in New Jersey have special needs? Let's talk about teachers in special education. Over the past decade, the number of special education teachers has decreased by 17%. But you know, the number of students with autism is growing. So there's a huge lack of teachers in special education. I know there are teachers in our congregation, and I know there's a huge lack of teachers overall, but especially in special education. So what's happening? These teachers who are teaching in the classrooms, and I have volunteers in our ministry as well as um, amongst our families who are teachers, right? I hear their story and it's, they're so stressed out and burnt out that it's hard for them to wake up to go to work every day. They dread it because it's so hard and they're absor having to absorb other people's jobs, teaching positions because there aren't enough. There aren't enough. What about the church? Almost one third of special needs families said they had left at least one church because their child was not included or was not welcomed. Nearly 50% of special needs parents said they refrained from participating in a religious activity because their child was not included or welcomed. The number of people with disability are dramatically increasing. People with disabilities are among some of the most vulnerable people in our society due to their dependence on others for care and support or because of social isolation. And we all know what social isolation is like, right? We've all been through this pandemic. We all know what it's like and it's that much worse for our families and friends with special needs. Those of us who are parents of neurotypical children, we know that our children, they're gonna to go to college, they're gonna get a job, maybe they'll get married one day, and they're going to go on and live independent lives. Some of us may look forward to that sooner than others. <laughs> but. Parents with children with autism or special needs, they don't have that. They worry about what's gonna to happen to their child because their child is dependent on them through adulthood. They worry about what's gonna to happen to their child. Are they gonna be well taken care of? Is there gonna be a community that will embrace them and love them? Because let me tell you, having had gone through special education as I used to be a teacher, um, I've been to a number of group homes. It's pretty depressing in there, pretty depressing. And the care for their children, for the adults who are in there, it's very subpar at best. 
If any of you are looking for a career, I hope you could pray. Pay attention to what God's putting on your heart. Because maybe he's calling you to be one of those caretakers. So that the families can feel relieved. Oh my goodness, my child has a place to grow old in because I'm not going to live forever. I'm not going to be able to be there to take care of my child forever. But there's a community out there. There's people out there who will really love and take care of my child. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. So church, we can be the church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. As stated in God's word in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. And then down in verse 22, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker, and I'm going to add, or disabled, are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Yes, with special honor. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Because if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And let me tell you, church, I really do believe that churches across the world are suffering because of this lack of appreciating, embracing our special needs community. Because if one part is suffered, every part suffers with it. But if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Do we want to be a church that can rejoice all together? Amen? Yes. Now you are the body of Christ. And each and every single one of you is a part of it. I didn't make that up. That's God's word. We're all the body. Today, we have Miriam and Pedro Susana with their daughter, Allie, who has autism, their son, Daniel, and their youngest daughter, Lively. They're going to come up here, and they're going to share their story with us. And I hope we could really embrace them. I hope that we can hear their stories. And just let the Holy Spirit move in your heart. If there are tears to flow, let it out. I've let lots of tears out. Part of my makeup is kind of gone from first service. <laughs> but it's all good because God really moved, and he's continuing to move through this family who is a huge blessing for me. So let's welcome the Susana family. God bless you, everyone. Um, we had such a beautiful time during first service and sharing our testimony as a family. Um, this is actually our first Sunday back since the pandemic. Um, and what a beautiful Sunday to be back. Um, as Pastor Shirley shared, my name is Miriam. This is my gorgeous husband and my beautiful children, Ali, Daniel, and Lively. Um, and we wanted to share with you a little bit about our special family. Um, first and foremost, we wanted to share a verse that has been so true to our hearts since we found out that we were having Ali. And that is Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a, a parent of a special needs child, a, a child who's differently abled and special, we held on to that because she is fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made and God doesn't make any mistakes. When my husband and I met and fell in love and got married, gonna be 18 years ago, um, <laughs> yeah. we both loved kids and we knew that we wanted to have children and we were told by doctors that that might not be a possibility because I had a tumor when I was younger I had to have my left ovary removed and the one that remained was full of smaller tumors. So they told us, you know, get that hope of having children out of your mind, but ultimately God always has the last word. Um, and so we got pregnant and we were super excited and 
very happy and we like to joke that it was the world's shortest pregnancy because we found out when I was three months pregnant and I gave birth to Ali at the end of the sixth month of my pregnancy. Um, and she was born under very unusual circumstances. My life was in jeopardy and so was hers. And so she was born this tiny little baby who looked like a little newborn bird that fell out of a nest. She didn't, she, her skin was translucent. It was so weird looking back at the picture. She didn't even look like she was human. Um, and we watched her inside of this little box and we're first time parents. We had no idea what was to come. We thought that the biggest part of our struggles were gonna be the first couple of months of her life. I remember specifically one day when the doctors told us she had a raging infection in her intestine and that she might need emergency surgery. And I was desperate, uh, kind of like the woman with the flow of blood. I was just searching for someone to pray with us. And we went to the social workers in the room and we said, is there a pastor, is there a pastor on staff, a, a chaplain that's a pastor that can pray for us? And they looked at us like, you know, they, there goes this person over here or there goes that person. And right there, it was like moments later, my brother got off the elevator with one of his colleagues who happened to be a pastor. And when I saw him, I was like, Pastor Ivan, Pastor Ivan, can you pray with us? They're saying that Ali might need surgery. And I wanted God, I was limiting God and we were all limiting God to be kind of like a genie. We wanted an instant prayer, uh, a miracle. And don't get me wrong, God is able. Mm -hmm. God is able to do something miraculous on the spot. But the times that he has not done these miraculous miracles, it's for a purpose, mm. a great purpose for us to get closer to him, for us to know his power, mm -hmm. not just instant. The best meals take the longest time to cook. And with Ali, he brought us into the room. We were all on our knees praying. My mom was praying, we were all praying. And he said to us, you know Miriam, God can heal her right now. We can walk back into the NICU and she can be healed. But if God doesn't do a miraculous healing, he is still God. Amen. And that testimony of knowing that he is still God, regardless of the circumstance, situation, or problem we were facing, was going to be something that we carried on throughout our lives as our family grew. Allison, at age two, <clears throat> she survived many surgeries in the NICU. And at age two, we noticed she was around Lively's age. She wasn't smiling anymore for pictures. She was having a real hard time getting a hold of words and she was just doing repetitive, repeating things and kind of off to herself. And we fought for a diagnosis and the doctors told us she had pervasive developmental disorder and autism spectrum disorder. It took her a little longer to get around things than neurotypical children, to understand things, even to use the bathroom um, on her own. But as time went on, we saw great blessings as well as great challenges. She doesn't communicate the way that you and I communicate. She does express her needs. But the biggest challenge that we had, we've had especially recently, is her, her ability to express her anger when she's upset about something. She's begun expressing self-injurious behavior. Imagine being locked up for two years because of a global pandemic and you being frustrated and able to express yourself. Imagine a child that can't say what she's feeling or how afraid she is or why is it that everyone around me is wearing masks and we have to stay home all the time. Mm -hmm. So for her, she took to punching herself, to breaking walls with her head. And as a parent, I can assure you that every parent in here will agree with me. The most challenging thing is to see your child hurting and you being able to do nothing. So we prayed and we asked God for, for his hand and we saw this church rally around us, even from a distance, Pastor Shirley really stepping in week after week, helping us and, and when we had certain challenges as a family, she was the one that was there, more so than even some of our family members. Because that's what the beauty of this community is, is rallying around each other. There's a story that really touches my heart in 2 Samuel. It's of a man 
who has a disability named Mephibosheth. And King David said he would always have a seat at the table. Whether or not you have a disability, whether or not your child is disabled, or maybe you're different in some way, just know that you will always have a seat at the table Amen. of the Lord. He loves us, each and every one of us. And I think sometimes I feel God's love even more through my daughter hmm. because it's so pure. And she's taught us more than we could ever teach her. You know, we were talking about Daniel in the last service and I was thinking about it. We always say that Daniel was her greatest teacher, but the only reason why this boy has the heart that he has, aside from God putting it there, is because he's had to learn from a very young age to be gentle, to be loving, and mm. to be patient. Mm. And that's something that I think that we all could use a little of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Pedro, and I always say this, I don't know how to follow this. <laughs> I, she's just amazing. <laughs> Um, I'm going to try to keep it together. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> so when we first got married, um, my wife and I went to a store, Christian bookstore, and found a little lamb, well, I found a little lamb walking around the store. Happened to be a pink lamb that sang, Jesus loves me, this I know. Um, she was wondering why I was picking up the lamb. I said, it's cute. Not knowing that two years down the line, we were going to have Allison. But the lamb reminded me that Jesus does love us. I mean, I can only imagine the love he has for us. I can only imagine the love he has for Allison and children like her and people like her. You know, like Pastor Shirley was mentioning in the video, it's been tough. We've had the same challenges as it was spoken about. We've left church because We've had people shush her because of the way she is. She was just being happy, jumping around and doing her thing. And, you know, we've been kicked out of places. Like, it's the people that don't understand autism or anyone with a disability. It's just, to me, it's just heartbreaking. As Miriam said, Daniel has become the person that he is because he has had to grow up taking care of his sister. He's had to be the older brother. And he is an amazing, amazing boy. He loves both of his sisters and he just, he has a heart that I, I can't even like, <laughs> I can't even like speak about because it's just amazing. He's an amazing boy. But, you know, Allison is just like him. Allison is an amazing girl. And if you see her, you'll see her smile when she's running around. You can see and you can tell that she's just, she's, it's just a light inside of her that she wishes to express to everyone her love. <laughs> Um, and if you Don't see her walking her. the hallways, like I've always said, just say hello to her. She'll say hi back. Don't Don't She's very loving. She'll hug, kiss. I mean, she, she wants to be friends with everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and as my wife was mentioning, it's, it's sad because we have family who have pretty much kind of... I don't want to say kicked us to the side because they still talk to us, but it's just there are times when... There's activities and no one invites you because they don't want the screaming child there. You know, they don't want the kid who doesn't know how to express themselves there because if there's something they don't like or something that they need, they'll scream or they'll, you know, and, and because of that, we've not been invited. And we, we've seen these things and, you know, even though people want to say, oh, no, it's because of X, Y, and Z, you know, you see this day and age of social media, you see everything. So... You know, um, it's an unfortunate situation, but we are grateful that we are here with you guys, that you have love and support for Allison, and not just for her, for other children like her and other people like her, and we are so thankful for the community that 
you know, this church is building. Um, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, always. Before I start, I just want to start off with a verse that really stuck to me when I found out that we were going to be testifying. <laughs> when you, it's from Isaiah 43, two, verse 2. When you go through deep waters, I will, I will be with you. Amen. Let me just start off by saying, Ali can be frustrating to work with, but every time I see her have a moment, I just sit back and calm down and try to see things from her point of view. Like if a song is too loud, she might get mad, but we just need to relax and remember that God is in control and he will make a way. I also want to say that even though times are tough for everyone, you just have to remember that God is in control. So sit back and let God take control of the wheel. God bless you. Amen. I think he and the family deserves a standing ovation. Can we stand up for them, please? Thank you, church. I don't know about you, but I'm more blessed I think of all the things that I try to do to support them, I receive more. And I get to experience more of Jesus through them. You know, even just before, at, towards the end of second service, I was just giving them a hug. And Miriam, she prayed for me. And it was such a powerful prayer so empowering, right? And I received from her. I was so blessed by her. And you know, Allie, what she likes to do is she likes to go up to you and like look at you and she won't go away until you look at her straight in the eye. What she wants is she wants to be seen. She just wants to be seen. Do we not, all of us, want to be seen? But so many times we're not. For her, it's that much harder because she's different. Church, oh, she just said, I love you. <laughs> we love you, Allie. We love you. <laughs> See how loving she is? She's so loving, right? Um, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> but uh, um, Because of when I see, oh, she looks at you in the eye, right? And a lot of our special needs kids at our church, they do that, right? Like we were at the parenting seminar and one of our special needs kids, Caleb, they were, the kids are watching a movie and he went right up against the screen facing everybody while they're sitting there and they're like, move, move, because he was in the way, right? He was standing there because he wanted to be seen because the kids weren't paying attention to him. Soon, our Zach, going to be coming back to church, can't wait, so excited. Zach will do that to you. He'll come up, he'll jump up, and he'll, because he's so excited to see you. Wouldn't you love to have somebody excited to see you? Say hi. Just look at him, right? And I know it could be uncomfortable and it's okay, right? But just say hi. They just want to see your eyes, because they see you. Will you see them, church? Will you see them, right? And it doesn't take much, really. Just even a hello, like during service here, somebody else came over and said hi to the family, and I was in tears. Because to be honest, church, sometimes I feel very alone, and I'm tired. I can't be the only one caring for these families, right? I have my own issues. I'm going through my own stuff. Pandemic was hard for me too, right? When, when going through a lot of struggles with my own family, Right, so I need my church. They need their church to send a quick text. Hey, how are you guys doing? And not to expect that we have to do everything for them. We can't, right? And we don't want to because then it blocks other people from being able to be the body of Christ together. But just do your part. The Holy Spirit 
lives in every single one of us, no matter how young, no matter how old. All you have to do is don't think about the burden. Just pay attention to that Holy Spirit speaking within you and just do that one thing. Just do that one thing. You can do it, right? Don't be embarrassed. Forget all that. Just remember, God sees you so you can see others. So please see our families and just people anywhere, wherever you go, in your workplaces, shop right, wherever you see people with a disability working there or just walking around, say hello. That hello can make a difference. And on top of that, as a church, if you would like to volunteer, <laughs> We hope you can because our special needs families, they have not been able to come to church because we don't have enough buddies for them. And it's the kids, we want, it's all about inclusion. They're all in their respective ministries with all their peers. We want their peers to get to know them and experience Jesus through them too. But they need support. So if God places it on your heart, we want at least two volunteers per child so that you could take turns. It's not just on you all the time, right? And we build a community together to walk alongside of each other, to love each other, because we may not know exactly what to do, but God has shown us love. All we have to do is love. So sisters and brothers, don't let anything get in your way of receiving God's love for you, because if you do that, you're not able to share God's love as much. So be proactive in your own relationship with Jesus. Receive his love because he loves you greatly. And then let that love overflow, especially for our special needs families. So church, I know you. You can do this. We can do this together. And we need to do this together, church. Amen? Amen. If you're interested in the ministry, we have a table out there at the end of service. Come out and see. And somebody even came by and was like, you know, my family situation is hard right now. We don't feel like we could volunteer, but is there anything we could share, any resources? I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And I'm not going to mention his name because I didn't ask for permission yet, but someone on the worship team volunteered and he donated the um, noise cancellation headphones for our kids because sometimes when they're in service it's too loud for them it's overstimulating so he donated a bunch of the um, headphones to our ministry and so our kids could come in and they could worship with us without getting overly stimulated something like that church you can do that right donate a gift card to a restaurant so that the family she, Miriam's a great cook by the way <laughs> and she cooks a lot right but she's tired She's tired, right? So maybe we could donate some money of a gift card for a restaurant where they could order food or go out or whatever. We could do that, right? And something, I wanna give a shout out to Pastor IJ. I don't know if he's in here, but with the youth group, we reached out to Pastor IJ because Allie's in youth group, right? And Allie wants friends. Who doesn't want friends? Right? So Pastor IJ was like, you know what? We're going to have an F and F in particular just for Allie. Right? So we're going to have a Friday night fellowship, that's F and F, for Allie, where we're going to maybe do some baking together. We're going to do things that she likes. She loves pink, by the way. <laughs> and she loves reindeer. And the family could tell you more things that she likes. But the youth group is going to do that for her. Right? And I'm so excited that youth group kids will come out and say hello, get to know her, and that she's going to be able to say that she has friends. Isn't that beautiful, church? Yeah. I just want to share one more thing, and I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize, Miriam. A lot, but as you were speaking, I felt from the Holy Spirit to share um, something. You know, we, we ask God to speak to us as believers. We pray and we meditate on his word and worship. And we ask God, talk to us, speak to me, reveal yourself to me. And um, a lot of you know, I recently lost my mom 11 months ago and she was the matriarch of our family. She's the person that instilled faith in us and our number one supporter and help. And when we lost her, it was really hard because in these times with Allie, 
you know, she'd be the one to instill wisdom in us, pray over us, love on Ali, in the, even in the middle of one of those tantrums. And it's been really hard. And I think we lost sight of the fact that Ali's grieving too because my mother was her best friend. And there was one day when I was crying silently in the kitchen and Ali came running up to me. She did what Pastor Shirley said. She looked me in my eyes and she said, Grandma's heaven, Grandma's in your heart. She was letting me know that although I was sad and she was sad, my mom lived inside of my heart and was with the Lord. That really ministered to me that a child that we kind of throw to the wayside as being disabled could communicate so beautifully on behalf of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so if you do take the time to volunteer, not just with Ali, but with the other children that are here, you might receive the biggest blessing and answer to your prayer in a way that you never expected. Each and every one of you has beautiful gifts and talents, and maybe you don't think you do. But as Pastor Shirley said, maybe just holding one of their hands if they allow you to, or saying hello, you're going to be giving to them and they're going to be giving to you so much more. Because Ali always says, friends are coming, friends are coming. When she sees my son playing with his friends. And when Pastor Shirley told us about the FNF and I spoke to Pastor IJ in the first service and we plan to do something even in our home. Ali's so excited. She woke up at 6 a.m. today because she knew she was coming to church. She does not wake up early for school. I will let you know that. But she was very excited to come here. And that speaks volumes to the love that she feels in this room. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Miriam. Thank you. Can we pray, church? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? We're going to pray together here. And yes, if you feel called, feel free to reach your hands out to the Miriam, uh, the Miriam family, the Susana family over here. And we're going to pray for the Susana family first. And church, as we pray, we're going to do something different. I know we may not be quite used to this, but Holy Spirit is here and he is working. As we spend time praying for the family, if you or any of the requests that I'm going to put out here, if you feel compelled, just stand up where you are or you could sit and just say the prayer out loud and bless the church bless us as God speaks and ministers to and through you too and through the Holy Spirit we're going to start with prayer for the Susana family We're also going to pray for our other families with special needs in our church. You know, we actually have more families now who's come out since the pandemic joining our church. And it's a beautiful thing, church. It's a beautiful thing. Let's pray for these families as they come to our church. They will feel welcomed. They would not just be tolerated, but they would be embraced. Their whole family, God. Let's pray for them. Let's take time to pray for our teachers, the teachers, especially for the teachers of special ed, people who are in the education system. Let's pray for them to really rise up to advocate for the students who really need the help, who really need the guidance. Let's pray for the teams, the principals, 
Let's just pray for everybody involved with administration, for the education, for our special education friends. Thank you, God. God, we know that there are barriers. Jesus, pray against, God, against the greed of money and power. Lord God, we pray that they do not see And let's pray for our church. Let's pray that we would no longer turn a blind eye. Let's pray against fear. Let's pray against shame, against anxiety, all those things that God alone would shine through and rise up through his church. That our church, Metro Community Church, would rise up as warriors alongside of our Savior Jesus Christ for our families with special needs and for each other, that when one suffers, we all suffer, and when one rejoices, we all rejoice. Let's pray that our church would be that church, sisters and brothers. Jesus, we thank you for your mighty, mighty love. We thank you so much that it's because you have loved us first that you sent your one and only son who walked this earth, showed us the way to love. Jesus, Jesus, you are the one that went to see the people who were not seen. You were the one that went to the people who were tossed off to the side. You are the one that has reached out and brought down your great love for your people. Everybody else was like, what? What's Jesus doing? He can't be doing that. You showed the world, God. You showed the world how great your love is and that your love knows, knows no bounds. God, I pray that your love continue to shower down upon us all as your church, that we would see it, we would feel it, God, and we would exude it to your people, that we wouldn't hold back, that we would be the church that be known as the church that shamelessly goes out there and loves, that we will be that church that loves our friends and families with special needs, who needs that extra support who needs to be honored more. And that, God, we would all be a community together, just growing together, being blessed by each other with every little thing to every big thing and anything that you prompt us to do, God, because you see it in us, you know we can. So we thank you, God. We lift up all of our special needs, families, and just for whatever transformation you're going to bring about in any one person, in a church, in our society, in the world. We just want to keep going in step with you, God. And we thank you that you are God and we are not. That you are our God of hope, of resurrection, power. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.